All right then, so we have our three different components now. We have the root component, app.js, the home component, and also the navbar one as well. Now what I'd like to do is add some CSS to those components, but how do we do that? Well, if we take a look at this root component, we already see this import, app.css, and it's coming from this CSS file right here. So when we created the boilerplate React application, it came with these styles for the root component over here. Now, anything inside this app.css file is going to be applied to not only the app.js components, but also any component that is in the browser at that time. That's because React just takes all of these styles and it adds them to the head of the web page. So if we take a look over here, if we inspect and go to the elements and take a look inside the head, we're going to find a styles tag at some point with all of those styles inside them. It's this one right here. OK, so bear that in mind, these styles, if we import them into a component are not only going to style what's in that component, but also anything else that is being displayed on the page at that time as well. So it doesn't really scope the styles to a single component. Now, you could use something called CSS modules to scope your styles or use something called styled components. But that's not something I want to get into right now. But maybe in the future, I'll do playlists about these. So having separate CSS files for different components in our case at the minute is mainly just an organization thing. For large projects, I might sometimes do this. But a lot of the time when I'm doing smaller projects, I just have a single CSS file, this index.css file right here and add pretty much all of my CSS into that. And this would kind of be like a global style sheet and it would apply to all components. So this index.css file is then imported into this index.js file right here. And what this does then is take all of those styles and add them inside the head again of the web page and it's going to appear there all of the time. So if we take a look at this, it's the first style tag and it's this stuff right here. So that's generally the approach I'm going to be taking for this project. So what I'm going to do is actually delete this app.css file and delete its import right here. Make sure you do that, otherwise you'll get an error and then save it. And then going forward, I'm just going to use this index.css file for all of my styles. So then let's flesh this out a bit. The first thing I'm going to do is delete the current content and then I'm going to paste in, first of all, an import, which is for a Google font called Quicksand. So I got this from Google fonts. And by the way, you can just copy and paste all of these styles from my repo. Remember, the link to this is in the description down below. So that's the Google font I'm going to use for this project. Next, I'm also going to just copy and paste some base styles because I'm pretty sure you don't want to watch me type out a load of CSS. If you want to learn about CSS, I've got tons of playlists on my channel about that. Anyway, I will quickly go through them. Right here, I'm targeting every element with the asterisk and stripping out the margin, applying a font family of quicksand, which is this we imported, and a text color of a dark gray. Now, the nav bar right here, which remember is this thing over here, I'm styling that giving it some padding, displaying it as flex, aligning the item's center, and that's vertically at the sit center, not horizontally. We give this a max width, add a margin of zero auto. We also give it a border bottom as well. The H1 in the nav bar, we make this a ready pink color. The links, we say margin left auto. That shoots them over to the right because the parent is displayed as flex. Then the anchor tags, we say margin left of 16 pixels. We take away the text decoration and give them some padding. When we hover over those links, we turn them that ready color. And then the content, which remember is right here. So it's surrounding the home component at the minute. We say right here, give this a max width as well of 600 pixels, margin 40 pixels, top and bottom, auto left and right to centralize it, and then a padding of 20 pixels. So some very simple styles. Now, if I come over here and refresh, we should see those styles take effect. Awesome. So that looks a little bit nicer. So there's one more thing I want to show you, and that's how to add some inline styling. So let's do that inside the navbar components, and we'll style this link right here. 
So you know in regular HTML we can do a style property and we set it equal to a value which is a string and then add the different CSS properties in here. Now we can do a similar thing inside JSX but this time it can be a dynamic value and remember when we want a dynamic value we use curly braces. Now the value of this is going to be an object in itself so we need another pair of curly braces inside the outer ones. So the outer ones represent a dynamic value to tell React, look, we're using a dynamic value for the style attribute, and this set of curly braces inside, this is the object, the JavaScript object, okay? So inside this object, we do different key value pairs. The key is going to be the CSS property and the value, the CSS value for that property. So for example, I could say color for the key, and then the value is always a string, and in our case, it's going to be white so the text is white for this link then we do a comma and do another key so for example background color now this is where it gets a bit different because in css it's background hyphen color but remember we're in a javascript file and this looks a lot like a minus sign so we don't do this when we're using jsx for css we just camel case it like this background color and we set that equal to a value. Now I'm gonna use the same hex code as this over here. So let me copy that and paste it in. And then finally, we'll do one more. We'll give this a border radius, again, camel case, and we'll set that equal to eight pixels. So eight pixels like so. All right then, so this is how we do inline styling. A dynamic value, which is an object with key value pairs. If we save this and preview, now we can see this has taken effect. Now, I'm not going to be keeping that style, so I am just going to delete all of that, but I did want to show you how to do it in case you want to do that for some of your elements.